in the tapestry of life, moments weave together like delicate threads forming a mosaic of memories that define who we are. From the earliest days when a camera found its place in my hands, I embarked on a journey of capturing fleeting fragments of time. It was in this pursuit that I learned this profound truth. Time slips through our fingers with astonishing speed, reminding us of life's brevity. But in this ever-accelerating dance, the camera became more than just a tool. It became a portal, bridging the gap between the ephemeral and the eternal, and a faithful companion through the memories with those I love. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Motion VFX, and I'm excited to introduce you to our new pack for DaVinci Resolve, M Diary. So whether you're editing some old memorabilia as you saw in the intro, or really any other kind of creative project, M Diary includes a full array of transitions and overlay effects and titles, even a pretty good selection of LUTs specifically designed for journalistic style video. So after you install M Diary, it can be located in your effects panel. There are 11 video transitions. Under titles, we also have four add-ons and 18 typography presets. And then coming down here to effects, we also have four frames, five light leaks, 10 overlay effects, and four split screens. So I'm gonna come up here and click on toolbox and just search M Diary. And this will bring up everything in the pack all in one spot. So let's start by looking at these frame presets. Now these are a cool way to kind of give your photo or your video this Polaroid style frame. So over here I've got this JPEG and I'm just going to drag on this very first preset right on to this picture. You can see this blurs my background and puts the same picture in this Polaroid style frame here. And over in the inspector we've got some controls for adjusting how this whole thing looks. Now I'm noticing my picture is getting kind of cropped in a way that I don't like. So under the frame controls, I can just dial down my frame footage scale and reposition like this. You can also reposition the entire frame. You can scale and rotate. And you can also control the background here under effects controls. So you can turn this off if you want to put something else underneath. So you can see this is just going to give you a transparent background. Or when you have it on, you can reposition your background footage or scale it down. You can also adjust the blur amount as well as the chromatic aberration. And it can be really fun to kind of stack this effect multiple times. So over here I've got a couple other shots to use. So here is a portrait photo and you'll notice whenever I drag the same preset on there the background footage isn't fully covering the frame there, so we could go down to the effects controls and just size this up. So this could be a really interesting way to display a portrait frame inside of a horizontal timeline. Or you can sort of intentionally offset these and create this photo stack. And you can even turn on the frame animation. So this is based on the duration of your clip here. So if it's going a little bit too fast, you can either lengthen the duration or you can adjust the animation distance. So I'm gonna just lower this a little bit. And so if we play that back through, you can see that photo is kind of sliding to the right side ever so slightly. And with this top one, this is actually a video clip and this has already been trimmed. So if you add this effect onto a clip that's already been cut, then you won't get the in animation. Here, if I turn these bottom ones off, you can see even though we have our in and out animations turned on, we don't have those animations. And that's because these are based on frame zero. So if you wanted to actually show that fade, what you can do instead is right click your clip and create a new compound clip and then add your effect here. And now because this actually does start at that frame, we will get that animation. And so maybe with this one, let's turn on those bottom layers here. We can also increase the scale of that background footage and kind of do the opposite. So you can see it works with photos or videos and it could be a really interesting way to kind of create this photo stack effect. And I could even select everything and put the whole thing in a compound clip and then add on something else like this outline frame. And this will add kind of a retro rounded edge around the frame and it also sort of jitters to further emphasize that photo effect. Okay, so moving on to these light leaks, we've got five light leak presets and they're highly customizable. So I'm going to drag this very first one onto this shot right over here. And under the flare controls in my inspector, watch what happens when I adjust the flare position. 
you can see how the shapes kind of change depending on where we position the flare. Same with the width and the height. So you can really get so many different types of lens flares and light leaks based on just the single preset. You can also rotate to kind of get these different shapes. And of course you can change the color. Most of the color that we're seeing is actually coming from the prism. So we can also adjust these two different prism settings here to kind of dial in the light leak that we're after. And when you play that back through, you can see that it has this slight movement to it. So it works really well with this handheld shot. And of course you can stack these together. So you can add on something like this second one, which kind of gives you a huge glow over this whole entire area. So maybe we can increase the threshold to kind of make it a little bit more subtle. So here's what that looks like before and after. Okay, so moving on to these overlay effects. Now these are a lot of fun. So look at this blurring effect here. So if I drag this on to the clip here, you can see that it kind of creates this blurred soft edge around the frame and it gets sharper towards the center. And you can actually turn on the fusion overlay here and control this blur pattern. So right in the center, this is what is in focus. So you could reposition this if you wanted to, you know, emphasize a different area of the frame. And then over in the inspector, you can also increase the blur size as well as the range type. So by default, it's set to radial. So it will create a circle around the in focus area, but you can also choose linear and this will just create a wipe across this pattern here or you can even select reflect and this will give you a tilt shift style blur. So kind of a cool way to draw the viewer's eye to specific parts of your frame. We also have a really neat little double exposure effect. Now this will use two pieces of media. So the way this works is you need to stack your two clips that you want to use together like this and then just select both of them then right click and choose new fusion clip. And then you can just drag on this double exposure preset right over the fusion clip. You can see that the footage on top is kind of bleeding through on the darker areas of the footage on the bottom. And over in the effects, you can even switch this around and adjust kind of the in and out range or even invert the range. So you basically have four total combinations here and you can even dial in using these sliders. You can also kind of blur the edges here if you have some noise like I do. Now what I ended up doing in my intro is I actually keyframed the in and out ranges here to kind of create basically like a transition from one shot to the other. So towards the beginning of this shot, I just moved both of these range sliders all the way to the left side so that we were just looking at the first shot at 100%. And I added a keyframe and then I went a little bit ahead and I widened the range a little bit and moved them towards the center. And then I went ahead almost towards the end and pushed everything all the way to the right. So just another little idea there on how you can kind of push these presets a little bit further. And here's another really interesting effect. This is the refraction preset. It kind of displaces your footage in this really interesting way. And if you wanted to affect multiple clips at the same time, really the best way to do that is going to be using an adjustment clip. And you can see here, I've added this to my favorites, but you can also find the adjustment clip under the effects tab right up here. And you can just layer this kind of over the range of shots that you want to affect. So maybe I want this next shot to come next like this. And I can just add the refraction effect onto my adjustment clip. And this will of course affect everything beneath. And under the texture controls, we can adjust that displacement pattern as well as the strength and the softness. We have a lens distortion preset as well. This one's really cool. So you can adjust the zoom amount and even the position. So if you have a shot like this, I've got these fireworks here. I can reduce the center exclusion to make it a little bit easier to see the dead center. And I could align this like this and then maybe dial in that center exclusion a little bit and maybe even add a little bit more of that prism intensity. So that could be a really fun effect to stack together with other effects. And I also wanted to show you this photo loop effect. Now this will give you that kind of boomerang Instagram effect. And like all of our effects, it is also based on the original duration. So 
This clip right here is originally like a two minute clip that I filmed a couple years ago at a fireworks show. So if I were to try to put this photo loop effect here, you can see that we're pretty much just gonna get a still frame just because of the way this works. And so what I might wanna do is make a compound clip of this and then apply the photo loop to the compound clip. And now we get a proper boomerang. And over here in the inspector, you can even control how many times it loops. Now this will get evenly divided across the duration. So if I wanted a really fast loop, I can increase that to six and we will get six really short loops. Or if I had a longer compound clip, then even though we have this set to the default three, you can see that those loops are slightly longer. And if you already have this effect applied to your compound clip and you want to adjust the timing, what you could do is right click the compound clip and then select open in timeline. And from here, I can just hit T on the keyboard and kind of slide this back to trim and find a better section. And then I can hit A to go back to the regular selection. You can also use these buttons up here. And then I'll just double click my main timeline down here to get back to the bigger timeline. And there you can see that effect is now being applied to a different section of that clip. All right, so let's move on to the split screen effects. Now, similarly to the double exposure effect, these will also take advantage of multiple clips together. So these first three will use two clips. This last one uses three. So what we could do is stack two clips together like this, select them both, and then right click and make them into a new fusion clip. And I could drag on this very first one here, for example. You can see this will just put the additional clip inside of this little box here. And over here, you could switch these around using the split screen flip. And there's also a little animation. So by default, it will fade in and out. But you could also choose one of these other animation presets like top left, for example. This one will draw a square from the top left. Now, here's another variation. This one will just give you a larger frame. And here's one that just splits the two shots side by side. Now, let's also look at this very last one, which uses three. So what I could do is just copy this additional clip here and let's open up this fusion clip in its own timeline. And I will just add this third clip right inside of the same fusion clip. Of course, if I was planning for this, I would have just created a fusion clip with three to begin with. But now if I drag on this split screen number two preset, you can see we start off with this first shot on the bottom and the other shots come in from the sides. And we can also adjust their positions and kind of align the area of interest a little bit better. I could also switch the orientation to horizontal and this will give me kind of these widescreen crops on those shots. Of course, now I would need to adjust the position. And if I wanted to rearrange the stack, I could also right click and open this in the timeline and just flip these around like this. Now you can see I've got a different order here. And then we also have four of these little add-on graphics. We have a pretty simple logo fading on and kind of zooming in. So with this one, there is a drop zone control. You would just browse for your photo or your logo. And then we also have a recording UI where you could customize the timestamp up here. And this will just count up indefinitely for the duration of your title. And then we also have that classic viewfinder overlay, super useful. Okay, and then moving down here, we've got 18 typography presets, just a nice elegant way to add some extra information, maybe a quote or a time. Now take a look at this calendar preset. This one is fully customizable, so you could change your month and let's say you need to correct where the first day of the month starts. You can come down here to calendar controls and choose the correct first day. And you can see this one moved everything down. So my last day here is kind of hitting the border there. So we could also go to the background controls and just reposition this, maybe even increase the height a little. And you can even add a day's selection. You can choose to have them filled or just outlined like this. And then using the right on slider, you can control which days are selected. And this one will just kind of fade on nicely and then fade back out. And I like this title number two, it kind of grows from the thicker parts of each letter, pretty cinematic looking. And I got a lot of use out of title number four here. This one gives you control over the title 
And you can see here by default, there are already these spaces here to kind of create this unique shape. And what I ended up doing in the intro, I actually used the title kind of as the subtitle. So I just positioned this lower than the subtitle there because I thought bridging the gap looked kind of cool in between the H and the L in ephemeral. And you can see it also kind of fades on each word at a different rate. So I really liked that, super customizable, easy to use. And I think you can use this multiple times in the same timeline and kind of customize it in different ways so that it doesn't look like the exact same preset. All right, so lastly, let's take a look at these 11 transitions. Now these offer a really nice variety. I think these can be useful for so many different shots. I really like the film burn transition. You can see it kind of reveals the upcoming shot in a really organic type of pattern. And you can even customize the burn seethe, the angle, the size, and the offset to kind of choose what areas of the frame you want to reveal first. So I sort of use this to draw the viewer's eye to certain areas of the screen before the shot even comes up. And you can play around with the size a bit and make it look a little bit more subtle if you want to. And of course you can change the color, the brightness, the contrast, and get so many different transitions just off of this one preset. The glass transition is possibly the most customizable one that we have in this pack. So take a look. This one actually gives you a media source drop zone. So if I browse for a photo, you can see that it kind of wipes across the screen with that photo. Maybe I'd want to flip the direction of the swipe. You can even kind of reposition that photo and adjust the opacity. And you can also increase the glass softness a bit and also stretch out the duration to give you this really smooth kind of transition with that little hint of whatever you decide to put in the media source. So here it is with a different photo. Really nice. And I also like this slide transition a lot. This one kind of swipes across the screen in a colorful way. You can adjust the angle as well as the slide amount. And the blur scale can kind of change the overall transition quite a bit. And the aberration length. So you can see how when you change some of these settings, you will get very dramatically different transitions. You could even use these on text. So here is this simple title right here. And let's say we just turn off the out animation and I'm just gonna use that same slide transition on the way out, maybe make it a bit slower. And I'm gonna dial the slide amount really low, like maybe 0.2. And let's just make this an angle of zero. It will also increase the glow. So again, just so many different ways to use these transitions. Lastly, we're also including five LUTs with this pack. You can apply these LUTs on the color page under the LUTs panel, and all of these have a really nice, warm, nostalgic vibe. So that's gonna wrap it up for me. You can check out M Diary right now on our website. It's available for DaVinci Resolve as well as Final Cut Pro. So enjoy, can't wait to see what you create using this pack. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.